On today's episode, how to get promoted even when no one likes you. So stick around. Welcome back to my show where high achievers get promoted and get productive and get the corner office. Make sure you like and subscribe to this episode because every Wednesday I have a new career accelerating episode heading your way. You don't have to be liked to get promoted. And a lot of times this comes up with my clients where maybe they feel like their manager doesn't like them or someone else influential in the organization doesn't like them, or even maybe they're not disliked, but they're not favored over some other people inside the organization. And the strategies I'm gonna be sharing with you today are ones that I use personally to get promoted within my organization years ago. And even one of my clients went from manager to vice president entirely skipping over the director role because of these strategies that they employed so tactfully. The number one key strategy is to do the job you want. You're not gonna do it formally, right? Because you've been given all the responsibility, but start to do projects, start to take on initiatives that are at higher levels in the organization. Because the key is you want to reduce risk. That's right, you wanna reduce the risk of you being promoted. A client of mine who was positioning herself for the role, she actually named herself. She went around with that internal label of, hey, I'm the CHRO, and she began to make decisions and talk differently and make more powerful presentations in terms of how the HR function impacts the bottom line. And all of this resulted in a positive promotion for her because she began to sort of basically emulate a C-suite executive. And the good news is, this is not that hard. So begin to identify, think about the next level role you would like, or even two level roles above where you are today. And then begin to think about the projects and initiatives, and even the way that they present their information. How do they go about doing that and begin to emulate that in the role you have? And you'll, and you'll begin to raise your visibility in a positive way among those who make the promotion decisions. The number two strategy to get a promotion is to speak the language of the C-suite. That's right, the C-suite being the CEO, the COO, right? Senior executives in the organization. And I can almost guarantee you, well, pretty, I'm 99% sure the executives in your organization are using words like EBITDA, right? They're using words like, like earnings, they're using words like profitability. They're thinking about the long-term vision of the company, right? They're using these kinds of words. So if you're not familiar with these, start to look them up, right? No, we'll give you a little promotion strategy idea that was mentioned on, on my own podcast, The CEO Session. It's by Bob Ravner, who's the chief or the previous chief people officer over at Dollar General. He talked about you are not your role. You are a business leader who happens to be in your role. And so he used, he talked about it this way. He said, I didn't really show up to the meetings with the CEO and the COO always talking about human resource ideas. I was the chief people officer and a human resource leader, okay? But I was a business leader first. So I was a business leader who happened to have the skills of the chief people officer. So think of yourself as business leader first. And when you begin to present it that way, that my friends is a marvelous, it's a powerful way to begin to position yourself for promotion in the organizations. Because as you rise up in the organization, you begin to think about promotion from an overall business impact standpoint. That's right, you're not just thinking about your own function anymore, you're thinking about your own function in the organization, your role as it relates to others. Number three strategy to get a promotion is to become a great summarizer. Now, my friend and I used to kick back and say, yes, we would work on all these PowerPoint presentations when we were managers in a company, and we would kick back and laugh, and we'd say, really what most executives want is one big piece of paper or one big PowerPoint slide with one big bullet and one sentence. Now, if you can master that, that will definitely position you for promotion. Now, how do you need to think about that? Well, it takes an idea and makes it easy to remember, that's right, easy to remember. So you think about it from an executive standpoint, they're looking at lots of different bits of information and data points all day long. And the key is making it resonate with them in a way they can remember because they're the ones a lot of times that are thinking about the overall structure order of the organization. So take the ideas of your own area and practice the art of summarizing it into an executive summary. Now, a great executive summary is one sentence. 
a pretty good executive summary for three sentences. I think when you're driving down the road and you see a billboard, that's right, think of billboards. So instead of bulletins with lots of information in terms of executive summary, think about giant billboards so they can look at it, they can understand it and make sense of it. The number four strategy is to quantify the impact of your work. When you talk to senior leaders who are in charge of structuring the organization and thinking about promotion, it's often important to lead with the numbers. What is the quantifiable impact that a project that you're working on makes to the organization? And by the way, that works really well with number three that I just gave you in terms of being a great summarizer because a great thing to put in the summary is the quantifiable impact. And when you're, when you're speaking, in numbers and you're speaking in quantifiable impact you're speaking the language of the c-suite which is also another tip that i gave you earlier so you can see how these begin to fit together in terms of your promotion strategy the number five strategy is to schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings now you may be saying well ben this whole idea in this video is hey how can i get promoted even when people don't like me and if they don't like me they're not going to want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Well, I ask you to just give this a try, proactively schedule a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Now, the way to do that is to keep it short, okay? Think about 15, 20-minute increments, okay? Put that on their calendar, the time that's convenient for them, not just the time that's convenient for you. And then when you get on this, you want to be casual about it and ask them, that, tell them, that, share with them that you want to learn more about their organization. So that's another key point is you're asking to learn from them, not you tell them something or tell them what to do. And number three, you want to uncover their the pain points, right? What are they struggling with? What are the big challenges that they anticipate for their group? By understanding those challenges, you'll be able to understand the impact that your group can make for them. That's right, you're not scheduling this call with them to actually get stuff from them. What you're trying to do is build a relationship, build a rapport, and understand their pain points. And this helps position yourself for promotion because you're building relationships with highly leveraged leaders inside the organization. That's always a positive because they're highly influential in your promotion path. And two, you're also positioning yourself as someone who can add value to the organization in different ways. So maybe you're working in supply chain or you're marketing or, or communications, and that's what you're known for, but what we're trying to do is try to expand your visibility into other areas that you can add value. And this is so, 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 so important for your own promotion path because a lot of times it takes more than one person to say yes to a promotion, right? Or even a new role inside your organization. And if you're known as someone who adds value in different ways, you're gonna be better positioned to move forward and move up the career ladder. So let's quickly recap of the five key strategies to help you get promoted even when no one likes you. Number one is to do the job you want. That's right, don't just be pigeonholed in the role you have. Look to get to the next level by beginning to take on projects that are higher visibility and that demonstrate your higher level skills. Number two is to speak the language of the C-suite. That's right. They're using words like earnings and profitability and balance sheet. If you're not sure what those are, look them up on Google and start to investigate how your role right now makes a positive impact to those elements of the business. Number three is simply to become a great summarizer. And even though I say it's simple, it's not always simple. It takes lots of practice in your next communication. Think about the one big bullet that you could share at an executive level that would be meaningful to them, or worst case, take the one and expand it to three key bullets. Number four is to quantify the impact of your work and to communicate it out. Make sure that you're taking even the things that maybe seem soft and fuzzy, make sure you're finding ways to quantify the impact and communicate it out so they understand how you and your team are impacting the bottom line. Number five is to build executive level relationships by setting up one-on-one -on -one meetings understand their key pain points, and then begin brainstorming ways that you can be of support. Now, for more key strategies to help you get promoted, make sure to stick around for the next video.